welcome to the channel. I'm going to do a brief video on, well, basically I've been doing a lot of videos letting you know about myself because, I mean, why not? I could do one big video, but um, I'm not a fan of like doing an hour video on all my diagnosis. And especially also, that way if you want to know something, um, but you might want to just focus on one or two things, you can click on one video instead of just having to fast forward a whole video. I don't know, that's me. Sorry, my hearing aid's squeaking. You're going to hear that in a lot of my videos. My hearing aid's going to squeak. I'm going to turn it down so it doesn't annoy you guys. Um, I don't hear it a lot. Sometimes I do hear it, but I more feel it than anything. Okay, so this video basically is about a condition called hyperechplexia. Um, it's H-Y-P-E-R-E-K-plexia, and um, I think it's three different words. Um, I found out I had that actually um, back in January. I had a sleep deprived EEG done um, because um, we were noticing some seizure activity in my sleep, but we were not sure if it was just auras or what was going on. Um, so I went and saw the neurologist after that test and um, Sorry, I have allergies. Uh, and um, I have an amazing neurologist, you guys. Like, anyway. Um, so, on top of all of my things, accessories. And when I wear my glasses, sometimes my hearing aid tends to pop out of my ear, my right one. Because um, it has a dome. Okay, that has nothing to do with this. Anyway, um, so hyperechplexia basically is, um, if you look it up, I... I'm not going to get the full wording right, but the way my doctor explained it is basically it is a neurological condition that um, you can get startled very easily with different tactiles or noises or stimuli, um, very loud noises or sensitivity to cold or hot. Um, and um, he said basically my seizure treatment helps that. Not everyone who has hyperechplexia um, has seizures, but I happen to, and I'll talk about that in another video, but, um, it has to do with hypertonia, so if you have hypertonia, which I do, um, so, for example, if someone makes a really loud sound, like, um, I'm gonna actually do something, um, hopefully my dad doesn't say what in the world, okay, so if I'm, like, and, and I'm gonna expect this, so it's not gonna freak me out, but if I'm just, like, chilling and, you know, in my own zone, or, or we're at a store, and you hear a loud noise, like, it's got to be way louder than that, that was a terrible example, but, um, now I gotta, like, no, I don't have to fix it, um, so if we're at a store, you know, sometimes you hear, like, really loud noises, or you, I don't want to sit on the ukulele, <laughs> um, or you, um, you know, like, really loud noises in stores extremely startle me, like, I hear them, and people often think it's because I'm blind, and it's not the case at all. Like, I mean, I mean, maybe, like, if I don't know what it is and someone says, oh, it's just that, then yes, it is, I, I understand what it is. So I guess I can't say it has nothing to do with blindness, but this condition alone has nothing to do with blindness. And so, like, um, for example, I was in the store a couple weeks ago with some friends, and it was really late. We were at Walmart, and I don't know what they were doing if they were stalking something, but I'm telling you, they were like putting up things, and they, but it sounded to me like they were slamming it. And I mean, it happened, happened at least 10 times in a row. And it was so loud. And I even turned down my hearing aids. But you guys, my heart was beating so fast. Just like, da -da -da. And I was like, I was super startled, like legitimately. Um, So basically, something that might startle someone for like three to five seconds would startle me for 30 seconds to a minute. Literally, like, it would take me a minute to just be like, I would be shooken up for a minute, and that's how I'll be. Um, and so it's really uh, has to do with the loud noises. Um, it just it just makes me jump. Um, it's startling. Um, so if I ever jump and do something, it's not because I'm um, well. I am crazy, but in a good way. But it's basically because I wasn't expecting a noise, and it kind of freaked me out. Um, before I was on seizure treatment, it was bad. Like, having a fire drill at school, um, even in college and we had fire alarms, I would be startled literally for, like, the entire day. Like, we would hear that alarm and it would just upset me, it would throw me off, and literally the rest of the day I'd just be thrown off. And by the end of the day I was okay, but I was just shooken up by it. Terribly shooken up. And again, that was before I was on treatment, so that's gotten a lot better. 
and it does help. Um, it doesn't completely take it away, but it does help. So I'd, I'd take a minute over a day. <laughs> um, so basically, this happens in a lot of infants, which is really funny. I'm um, not going to say that uh, most adults, or it cannot happen in adults, and adults can't have it. I've always had it. We just never really um, knew what exactly was going on because I've had so many things in my life. Um, so, yeah, it's... It's basically, um, it's just a startling, neurological startling condition. So, um, that's how it affects me. And also, like, if I am, um, like, in the wintertime, when I go outside, I obviously don't get scared of the weather because I love snow. But if I'm not layered up enough, I literally do start shaking and, and getting, like, that, um, it's not, like, just because you're cold. Like, it's literally a, um... It's kind of literally like it makes my body go into seizure mode, sort of. I don't know if it's like tremors or it's like something like that, um, because um, it, it's a sensitivity to the to the cold. And I talked to my doctor about this, and I was like, so does that mean when I go outside, you know, I'm always shaking, like, even when I don't feel cold, it's just my body just automatically goes into, like, sh shaking. And he was like, yes, that's exactly what it means. Um, so, you know, and then certain um, textures just throw me off. Um, I'm working on that, but especially like when it comes to certain animals and that's gotten a lot better actually. So it's not a huge issue, but it's still something I'm working on. And that's not because I don't like the animals. It's when I feel different things and then moving. Um, it's a little startling at first because I'm not really sure what to expect, but it's nothing bad. And so if you or your child has this condition, it's going to be okay. <laughs> Um, I'm okay. I'm good. There are ways to to get around it and just kind of calm yourself or, you know, have others help you stay calm. That's what helps me the best. Um, so, yeah, that's all about hyper eclexia and my condition and how it affects me. All right, see you guys next video. If you haven't, comment down below and press that red button down below. Subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon so you receive videos, every video that I post daily. See ya. Talk back on. Screen. Stop video.